Hello everybody. Welcome to Kinesiology 2314 Sport Management. My name is Jeff Levine and I will be your instructor for the course. The purpose of this course is to expose students to the different principles that govern the vast array of what makes up sport management. And when we say sport management, that can be things, uh, sport, recreation, physical activity, or a wide range of combinations involving amateur sport, amateur recreation, professional, intercollegiate, international, nonprofit, and a litany of other areas. And with this course, I think that I am a great instructor to have as this being an introductory course because my background really runs the gambit of sport management. Uh, so I want so the purpose of this video here is to give you a bit of background information about myself as I'm a new instructor and probably unless you're very savvy no one knows who I am and then I also want to give you some background on this course and go through the syllabus so hopefully I won't keep you here as a captive captive audience all that long so let me give you a little bit of, a little bit of information about myself. As I said, my name is Jeff Levine, and uh, right now I am finishing my doctorate at the University of Louisville. Uh, my area of focus is on the intersection of law, pu public policy, and sport. And that's probably an interesting foci, or focus actually right now, uh, because of the fact that I've got a law degree as well. Uh, before coming to uh, a doctoral program, I actually uh, obtained my law degree uh, focusing on sport law at Tulane Law School down in New Orleans, and I went there specifically because of their sport law concentration. And then before that, I obtained a a uh, bachelor's uh, in sport management from the University of Michigan, and my focus was sport management and communications. So while at the University of Michigan, I was able to uh, work on staff with the athletic department as a as a, someone who worked for the Michigan football team in operations. And I followed that up with my law school experience where I interned at the athletic department with Tulane and focused more on legal and intellectual property, risk management, and business matters. Once I completed law school, I was able to work with a couple of uh, professional sports organizations, uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers and the Arizona Coyotes, um, at the time they were the Phoenix Coyotes, but with the Cavaliers, uh, my role was working under the general counsel, uh, and I was exposed to uh, many legal concepts, but also because the team was starting up a new professional hockey team, I also got a chance to work with senior management for branding, strategy, um, for legal strategy, for uh, sales and marketing and community relations strategies, so sort of running the gambit, um, and uh, that was a great experience. Really exposed me to many different areas of sport management, and also took me into other aspects like nonprofit community relations, working in operations, working uh, on the uh, with people who were either uh, coaches or trainers or doctors. So sort of again getting a wide breadth. Of, of, uh, of a look into a professional sports organization. With the Coyotes, I was able to work directly underneath the general counsel as an attorney, and that role was more legal. So that was looking at uh, insurance matters, contract matters, dealing with intellectual property, dealing with uh, things of that nature, and a whole litany of other things. And then uh, I briefly uh, was part of a sport, uh, sports agency where we were trying to work on creative solutions for clients wanting to uh, market uh, different products or different sorts of um, services. On top of that, I've also spent substantial time in private practice uh, as a practicing attorney. I'm licensed to practice law both in Arizona and in Michigan, and I've worked in uh, the areas of litigation, transactional law, and bankruptcy work. Litigation is where you would is is sort of where you see the lawyers uh, arguing in front of a judge or trying to make their case in front of a jury or cross uh, cross examining a witness or doing a deposition. That that's all litigation. That's 
an active lawsuit in court, whereas transactional work is someone who's drafting up a contract that's supposed to avoid litigation. And, we'll, and um, that's sort of where uh, a contract is an agreement between two or more parties that lays out rights and responsibilities. And if a contract is well written, you won't have to go to court because the contract will dictate what happens if there's a breach, if someone messes up. Then bankruptcy, I think people have a understanding of what bankruptcy is. That's where your debts outweigh your uh, your revenues. And because of that, uh, you're unable to sustain, uh, sustain uh, the economic sort of uh, life that you've created. Therefore, you need to have those debts discharged through bankruptcy. On top of that, I've also worked for the Fiesta Bowl Committee. I've worked for uh, a, a professional tennis organization um, that uh, was charged with staging a women's professional tennis tournament. Uh, I've worked for the Miami Dolphins in operations, and I've also uh, worked as an adjunct professor at different law schools and been part of the faculty at, at Southern Illinois University, Northwestern University, uh, and Concordia University, to name a few. So... I can tell you that if you've got a question about any area of sport management um, in most any, re in any uh, aspect of it, whether it's marketing, sales, branding, community relations, if it's international law, if it's uh, a business or finance matter, if it's a legal matter, if it's uh, professional, amateur, high school, um, intercollegiate, I think I can provide an answer for you because I feel as though my background is, is so varied that I can um, call upon an experience or have something that will be able to help you. On top of that, um, since I'm not that far removed from being a student because I, I graduated from um, my undergraduate program in 2004, so I was, didn't start college until 2000, so about 16 years ago. So I know what it's like to go into college or knowing that you want to do something in general, but not knowing exactly what that is. So with that being said, I think I could be helpful as a resource, as well as someone who can either point you in the right direction or maybe call upon your contacts so that I can um, give you that answer that you're looking for. So that's a little bit of a background about myself. And I'm sure I might not have told you everything, but um, one of the things that I strive to do because I'm here for the students is that I want to make myself accessible. So if you've got a question or you, or you want to talk about something, feel free to stop by my, my office, uh, email for an appointment, come by office hours, or just email or give me a phone call. And I'd be happy to chat with you um, because, you know, <clears throat> having come from practicing law and knowing a lot of people who are uh, our unhappy lawyers, I know what it's like to leave a profession where there's a lot of unhappiness and be somewhere where you're really passionate about. And I've discovered that being in sport management and working with passionate individuals, whether it's students, faculty, staff, or other organizations, um, that really drives me. And if I can help kindle that passion in other people, then I think that's that's a, a good livelihood. That's That's time well spent. So Please, do, do not hesitate to give me a shout. Now, moving on to uh, Kinesiology uh, 2314. So this is the introductory sport management course where you're really trying to um, study the principles of what really is sport management. Really, what is that amorphous word? What is, what is this amorphous field? So my goal is to provide you with an introduction into um, reveal, you know, demystify the sport management industry. And I want to tell you that I'm also cognizant that not everyone in this class is going to be sport management, uh, people who want to pursue a career in sport management. There's athletic trainers, there's people in exercise phys, there's people in, in, in physical education or teaching pedagogy. So I will do my best to make sure that I also include examples that are relevant to your fields. Uh, so I'll, I'll rotate. Um, on top of that, again, if you don't understand something or if I'm not being clear, feel free to reach out. That's what I'm here for. So again, course description and rationale, 
fairly straightforward. I want to give a foundation to the students about what is the sport management industry or what is the sport industry? How does it work? What are the different segments and what careers uh, are available and what skills are necessary in order to be successful? So in terms of course objectives here, I want uh, students to be able to, coming, uh, coming out of this class, I want students to be able to discuss the opportunities that exist within the sport industry and what challenges and opportunities exist within that, those different segments. Um, wh one of the, found, uh, one of the uh, points of, the fo of uh, a foundational class like this is to provide not just a historical uh, perspective, but also different other disciplines, whether it's sociology or psychology or um, uh, the like involving sport. And then I also want you to know some of the different theories, whether, whether it's organizational behavior or whether it's something else uh, involving sport management. And I just want you to understand um, what, different, um, what different avenues exist within sport management and to identify and, and understand what, what are sort of the uh, hot button areas uh, within this field. And I also want to try to help you develop critical or skills that are critical to this field and profession. So you can see under uh, part six here, here's the course topics. So we'll be hitting uh, one, to two one to two chapters a week. Uh, there will be a lecture um, each week. Though There will be uh, discussion boards. There will be a quiz. There will be assignments. And um, I'm hoping to also give you uh, the opportunity to um, learn from people that have experience in the field and maybe um, make some connections. I'm, and I think we can do it through WebEx if uh, I'm able to interview people or through WebEx or allow students to come in and participate through WebEx. So I'll be talking to the IT people since this is my first rodeo with this uh, uh, software-laden uh, um, approach. Um, I've taught online before, um, but usually uh, taught through WebEx. Here, um, this is the first fully online class without WebEx I've taught, but I think It'll still be very interesting, a lot of fun. Um, as you can see in some of the course topics, not only are we going to be talking about things from professional sports or agency, but we'll be talking about things from the health and fitness industry, recreation, et cetera. So it'll be interesting. Next uh, thing I want to tell you about is, is contact. Um, in addition to email or phone, uh, I also am introducing the opportunity to contact me and fellow students through what's called the Classroom Cafe. So if you uh, feel comfortable with asking a question in, in, this, in the Classroom Cafe, which is open to all students, it's like a discussion board to post about something about an assignment or something about the course, or maybe you just saw something that interests you and you wanted to bring it up to the class. I will be checking that pretty regularly, and I'd recommend, I'd encourage everyone to post and to check that um, pretty frequently. Um, I will also be posting uh, articles and things like that, topics that are relevant to course, like to the course, like uh, for example, um, the whole Olympic scandal with Ryan Lochte, and um, how what how, what sort of aspects does of sport management does that bring in, and how does that impact us as future sport managers or future decision makers within the field of sport and sport management? So go ahead and feel free to post uh, onto the classroom cafe. Now, in terms of evaluation, as I said, uh, each week you'll have discussion boards to do, which will be simulating as if you're participating in class and class discussion. Each week you'll have a quiz. Um, uh, most every time the quizzes will be open book, open note. There'll be 10 questions, either true, false, multiple choice, short answer, or matching, something of that combination. And you'll have about 15 minutes to, to hit all 10 questions. And so you can certainly consult your materials, uh, but you're going to have a tough time just hunting and pecking through the materials and meeting that time. Uh, so you're going to want to make sure that you read the chapter at least once, go through the slides at least once, and go through uh, my PowerPoint lecture, which is going to be found uh, like it is here on, a, on YouTube. Um, so you'll want to make sure you've got all that and have reviewed that stuff before taking the quiz. Uh, you'll have assignments. Um, I'll be posting assignments throughout the semester, and uh, they are all, all of the aggregate will go into applied assignments for a quarter of your grade. 
There will also be uh, uh, one assignment that's supposed to kind of, um, which I'll provide that information to you later uh, in the semester, that's supposed to help you to better uh, uh, explore and understand the sport management field um, through an in-depth dive on a six-page uh, research paper. And uh, I'll talk more about that a little bit later. And then there will be a midterm and a final exam. The final exam may or may not be cumulative depending on um, the outcome of how the semester is going. And that will be probably through Respondius Lockdown Browser. Um, so we'll see. Here's more information about your discussion board. So feel free to read that when it's convenient for you. Um, the one caveat here is that uh, I ask you to post your discussion board answers in a professional manner. No text language, no uh, chat language. Uh, do it if it, it was an actual uh, assignment. Use APA when appropriate and uh, also be respectful. Certainly, I encourage spirited debate, um, but I want, I want everyone to be posting in a respectful way, please. As I said, chapter quizzes, um, fairly straightforward and, and self-explanatory. Um, Chapter quizzes, like all assignments, will be due at 1159 uh, on that Sunday of that week. So uh, everything will be due at the end of the week uh, on Sunday. Um, your assignments uh, will be posted to Blackboard under the Assignments tab. Um, I might also have it under the uh, their uh, respective week folder, so we'll stay tuned with that. So I told you about uh, the... Uh, uh, midterm and final, uh, it's going to be similar to quizzes. You've got the grading scale right there. Oh, uh oh, got the grading scale right there. And then uh, here is our tentative outline. So you, as you can see, for week one, uh, I want you to review the syllabus, and uh, I may or may not ask you to take a quiz on the syllabus. Although it's it's so it's so uh, short that I probably won't ask you to take a quiz. We've got chapter one to go through. There will be a quiz on chapter one. Week two, two and six, et cetera, et cetera. It's pretty straightforward. I'll probably have some a supplementary reading and guest speakers and things like that to spice things up. So um, it'll be exciting times. Um, attendance is important. That would be um, completing your, your assignments when necessary and when expected. So doing your discussion boards, doing your quizzes, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, late assignments will not be accepted unless it's uh, due to some sort of univer university sanctioned reason. So um, uh, I will need to have you, if it's anything related to something the university covers, then, then uh, I will accept that. But anything else, I will not accept. Um, appropriate classroom behavior. This kind of falls under the uh, phrase of be respectful. Um, we're all adults. Um, everyone is intelligent. Everyone's opinion should be respected. Um, we can all have debate um, in a way that's professional and respectful. Um, and that goes for me too. Uh, there should never be a situation where I do something that makes any student feel uh, uncomfortable or disrespected. Uh, that's not, again, that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to help and to um, you know do some good. So if I'm making someone feel uncomfortable or feel disrespected, that is me not doing my job. So this sort of uh, appropriate classroom behavior applies to me just as much as it applies uh, to you folks. Um, if you are, if a student is exhibiting rude behavior or disrespectful behavior, it could result in a reduced final grade or a failure of the course. But that, I'm not expecting that to happen. Um, academic uh, honesty and dishonesty, um, really briefly because there, there's a more uh, information on that below, but I'm expecting people to not cheat, expecting people to do their own work, expecting people to act honestly. Um, I really haven't had a situation terribly where someone um, was caught cheating. I did have someone who um, plagiarized uh, too much of their uh, assignment from a couple of websites, but that was the extent of it. But, you know, use common sense. Um, if you're cheating um, and you're turning something on the Blackboard, uh, Blackboard is smart enough to check the Internet and to show that you plagiarized. So just let's not do it and let's have a great semester. In terms of the textbook, uh, the textbook is available, uh, or at least it should be available uh, this week. 
um, at the University's Barnes & Noble. It's uh, Master Alexis Bar and Hums, Principles and Practice of Sport Management. Coincidentally, this person, Mary Hums, is my co-advisor at the University of Louisville. So if I did not use her book, she would probably disown me. It's a good book, actually. Um, it was the book that my predecessor used before me coming, and it's the book I've used uh, when, I, when I've taught this class. So good book, fun book, um, exciting stuff. Um, I will probably supplement from time to time, but this is the only book that you need to buy. This book is mandatory. If you don't um, get the book, you're, the likelihood of you performing well in this class is severely diminished. We've got more, info, uh, more uh, info on academic honesty. Um, as you can see here, um, if, I, if there is a situation of academic dishonesty, I have a wide berth to um, select a remedy. So it could be you know, just a reprimand or it could be something as much as um, an F uh, for, the, for what you plagiarized or an F for the course. So let's not go this way. Um, finally, we've got um, the statement on disabilities and dis disability com accommodation. So uh, if you do have a disability, you are, in, according to federal law, entitled to what's called a reasonable accommodation to, uh, to uh, compensate uh, for the disability. So, um, for example, well, I should say that uh, I read a statistic that said one in five people or 20% of the population have some sort of disability, including myself. I was recently diagnosed with ADHD, so um, disabilities are something that affects uh, a large percentage, percentage of the population, and this legislation, legislation exists to help people uh, with accommodations, so I would suggest taking advantage of that. And so the way to do that would be to... Um, contact the, the disability services on campus, um, and that's the best way. Their phone number is right down there. And, um, you know, let's, and then that, that will start the process. Um, that is really much it, and uh, hopefully I did not bore you folks too much. Um, like I said, um, this is just the introduction, uh, providing a little bit of background about myself and about the course and uh, where we're going to go from here through the syllabus. But as I said, uh, my name is Jeff Levine. I'm very excited to have you guys uh, as students, and uh, I'm looking forward to a great semester. So please, in the interim, feel free to contact me. If for some reason um, you're having problems with Blackboard or something's not right, uh, shoot, uh, shoot me an email, and... Um, Please stop by my my office. I would love to get to know every student in my class, or pick me, you know, give me a phone call, or give me a Skype. I'm happy to Skype as well. Uh, I have a Skype handle at a at <clears throat> excuse me, it's called at J F Levine, and uh, I think that's it. So um, this is going to be a lot of fun. This technology is interesting, and uh, we'll see where it goes. All right, everyone, have a great week and. Uh, the next lecture or the next video will be a lecture on chapter one. Don't forget to do your discussion boards and your quiz. All right. Bye-bye.